Lewis, coming in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, a.k.a. Jesus Christ, Son of the Living God. I'm around the ministry today, hanging out with the Most High uh, in His Spirit, chilling and giving Him the glory and the honor, thanking Him for another day. The Bible said this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Coming just a few minutes to uh, follow up on a post that I put on YouTube concerning Jacob's trouble. I did uh, a teaching on Jacob's trouble. Most of you probably have looked at it. Uh, Jacob's trouble, is it for the Europeans or is it for Jacob? Has gotten over 11,000 views in less than 15 days. Part two has gotten over 7,000 views in 15 days. And I did another lesson entitled, Jacob trouble is no more, is no more than the wrath of God upon those who troubled Jacob. So I've been around the Christian world, the uh, Christendom for some nearly 44 years. And so I remember that doctrine being taught many times and I have taught that doctrine at times until the most high woke me up. So that doctrine that's called Jacob's trouble can be somewhat confusing because when the people say the term Jacob's trouble, you tend to think that that's trouble coming for Jacob, but that ain't what it is. Why do I know that? Because you find that term in KJV only one time that I can find in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse seven. How can somebody take a term called Jacob's trouble out of a whole chapter and then establish a whole doctrine and preach it all around the world and everybody believing it's a trouble coming for Jacob and nothing in that chapter agrees with it. You go read Jeremiah chapter 30. Jeremiah chapter 30 talks about a time when the Israelites come back from the lands of their captivity, where it's their time now to rejoice. It's their time now to be built. And it's time for everyone and all the nations that troubled Jacob to be troubled. So what Jacob trouble is, is a punishment on the nations of the world. And Jacob is going to be helping to administer that punishment. If you look at Revelation, I think it's chapter 11, you see the 144,000, the two witnesses, the Southern and the uh, uh, Southern Kingdom, Northern Kingdom, you're gonna see the first fruits taken out of all the tribes of Israel in Revelation chapter seven, verse one down to verse four because in Revelation chapter six, starting at verse 12, you see that the sixth seal announces the day of his wrath has come and who shall be able to stand. Now, before the wrath is poured out upon the earth, you go to chapter seven in Revelation and you see the angels. The Bible said he coming in the sky with his angels, send his angels to the four winds to get his elect from the four corners of the earth. That's the Israelites, that's Jacob. They still scattered. They ain't back in no nation in 1948. No scripture validates that. But he sends his angels to get the 12 tribes of Israel from all the nations of the world. And out of those, uh, those 12 tribes scattered all over the world that he gathers at this time, he choose 12,000 from each tribe not from the tribes of the churches or the Christian churches or the Catholic churches or the Protestant churches, from the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what it says. And so he marked his servants. And then you see his servants still here during the time of wrath upon the nation, prophesying doom and gloom upon them. Hallelujah. The Bible said anybody that touched one of these, uh, these uh, Israelites that's in the 144,000, that they must be killed. They must be killed in the same way. They're gonna be here helping to punish the nations for what they did to Jacob. Jacob's trouble is Jacob's time to trouble the world, trouble the nations that troubled us. That's what that is. So it's been taught like as if uh, somebody got to build a temple, a third temple in the Middle East. And uh, then all of a sudden the Jewish people that's over there now saying they the real people got to uh go into the temple and then they're gonna make a covenant with this antichrist figure and then after three and a half years this that this antichrist figure gonna break the covenant with the jewish people 
then the next three and a half years of that seven years is going to be called the great tribulation folks all of that's baloney and the bible don't back it up and what i did in that teaching is i went to the word of the living god i didn't go to nobody's commentary i didn't go to nobody's seminary i didn't even go to uh, some of the seminary training i had in the past i went back to these simple holy scriptures and just read them the bible said give attendance to read it give attendance to doctrine and the law to give you understanding the most high want his people to come back to simplicity to just read the bible uh let scripture interpret scripture let scripture validate itself build your own relationship with your father he want to know know you and have a relationship with you stop depending on preachers and people that seem to be smart people that got all kinds of learning and titles behind their name father don't care nothing about those titles in the sense of eternal life and knowing god he wants us to come back to simplicity because we have listened to men and doctrines and uh we've listened to people's research and education so much until we've missed a lot of things and there are many things that we believe today that the scriptures don't even agree with the bible said the bereans what made them noble is that they heard apostle paul preach the word now watch what they did the bible said they received the word with gladness but then they went and searched the word daily to see if those things were so they didn't go outside the scriptures to try to find an answer from the most high they received the scriptures and they went search the scriptures to see if what Paul was saying was so. Scripture is supposed to interpret scripture. The Bible said no prophecy of the scriptures is of any private interpretation. We're not supposed to be interpreting the Bible. No preacher is supposed to be telling you this is what that means. No, the Bible is supposed to tell you what that means. And so when we come back to simplicity and when we come back to trusting the spirit, the Holy Spirit, and come back to trusting the Holy Scriptures, you'll find that the Father want to talk to you and he want to explain things to you. Put your trust back into the Father. Don't put it in Curtis Lewis. Don't put it in some denomination. Don't put it in some research somebody done did. Don't put it in the faith of people. The Bible said he'll use foolish things to confound the wise and the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. So it's time to come back to simplicity. And in this message, Jacob Trouble, if you go look at it, amen, over uh, 11,000 people in 15 days, uh, part one, over 7,000 in part uh, two. Why am I uh, bringing this forth? Because I want you to know the truth. And, uh, you know, because a lot of people still believe in the lies. A lot of black churches still believe in the lie, waiting for a third temple. How are they going to build a third temple and they ain't never built the first one or the second one? How are you going to build a third temple and you ain't the real people? So the whole world waiting for them, the Jewish people, to build a temple. If they build one, that's their first temple. Why? Because you're not the people. And why do I say that? None of the prophets back them up, but it backs us up. These Negroes waking up all around the world. And we ain't got to try to prove it to nobody. The scriptures and the prophets prove themselves. This is Apostle Curtis Lewis. want to encourage you to go check that message out. Jacob's trouble. Is it for the Europeans or is it for Jacob? Part one, part two. Then I did a third lesson entitled Jacob's trouble is no more than the day of wrath coming on the nations for what they did to Jacob. That's what Jacob's trouble is. So don't let that term deceive you as if that's trouble for Jacob. Now, I know about the great tribulation. I know about the tribulation of Jacob. I know about that according to the Bible. That's not what I'm talking about. And that's not what that term is talking about. Go back to Jeremiah chapter 30. Nothing in the entire chapter agrees with the doctrine that's been taught concerning Jacob's trouble. But yet, people believe it's trouble for Jacob. Go back and study to show yourself approved and the most high give you understanding. Pastor Lewis saying we love you. Thank the Father for you. We're going to see you on the next YouTube and Facebook Live. Shalom. Israel, look up. Your redemption draw at night. Deuteronomy 30. Verse 1, 9 to verse 8 says, when we come to ourselves and we remember ourselves in the nations of the world, he said that then he's going to turn our captivity. Then he's going to have compassion on us. Then he will return and gather us. Then he will put these curses 
on the people that cursed us. That's what we have to look forward to. But he said, return to his voice, meaning the royal law. See you on the next live. Pastor Lewis said, we love you. Thank God for you. Remember, someone cares for you. His name is Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeah, I say both of them. Love you. Hallelujah.